Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad we can all be together in this time of worship and prayer. Let me read to you Psalm 147, verse 1. Praise the Lord! How good it is to sing praises to our God! How pleasant and fitting to praise Him! You know, I agree with the psalmist. It is always good and fitting to start each day praising our God. Let's prepare our hearts as we come together in worship. man your mind for love that even though his soul was lost for him you bore the only cross that could restore you saw my past and knew my shame yet still you chose to love the same This is the gift you freely gave Immeasurable grace And this is why we sing your praise Lift high your precious holy name Jesus Christ, the Son of God, because of your love, our debt is paid. You saw my past and knew my shame, yet still you chose to love the same. This is the gift. This is the gift you freely gave. Immeasurable grace. Immeasurable grace. Immeasurable grace. And this 
This is why we sing your praise Lift high your precious holy name O Jesus Christ, the Son of God Because of your love, our dead is paid And this is why we sing your praise Lift high your precious holy name O Jesus Christ, the Son of God of your love our debt is paid because of your love our debt is paid because of your love we sing your we sing your praise because of your grace our lips sing praises you know that's what we want to think about this morning we want to think about your favor in our lives your goodness just begin to think about that just begin to worship with thanksgiving in your heart. From golden streets, stars at your feet, from royalty, you came down. How can it be your Majesty would reach for me. You came down and you found me, and you saved me, and you made.
my heart will sing I'm yours forever I am yours oh oh Jesus, to you alone we sing our praises and adoration, for no one is like you, holy, righteous, and merciful. May you be pleased as we worship and offer our prayers to you today. In your name, amen. All over the world, the body of Christ is joining together to pray for healing over the nations. May I ask everyone to bow our heads as we offer our prayers to God on behalf of all the nations ravaged by COVID-19. Let me lead you in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace today and we are mindful of your ancient promise to pour out your spirit on all flesh. Although this promise was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts, history bears witness to the fact that countless times through fresh outpouring of your spirit, you have revived your church and saved the lost. Our economies have been impacted by this pandemic and our nations have been shaken. Yet there is great promise hidden in this pain because the nations of the world have been ripened for harvest. Like we see in the book of Joel, we ask for revival and harvest to come through a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we cry out for your church to be revived and for millions to be saved. Today we stand in awe of your care for the people of the world, for it is an, an all-encompassing loving care that extends to our spiritual, emotional, relational, physical, and material needs of every human on our planet. Knowing that your omniscient eye misses nothing, we ask you to heal those who have been afflicted by COVID-19 and comfort the hearts of those who have suffered loss. Lord, we boldly come before your throne today asking you to eradicate COVID-19 from the earth and to heal 
our nations from the ravages of this pandemic. We ask for a spiritual awakening in the nations of the earth. In your precious name we pray. Amen. We've been learning from the book of Proverbs for some weeks now. And for today, we are in Proverbs 26, which has 28 verses. But for this morning, we will focus on two verses only. So let me read them to you. I'm reading from the NIV 1984. Proverbs 26 verse 20 says, Without wood, a fire goes out. Without gossip, a quarrel dies down. Verse 22. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to a man's inmost parts. You know, I remember when Victory was just starting, we used to meet at the basement of Tandem Cinema at CM Recto Avenue, Manila. The young church was composed of students. And to help us grow in our relationship with God, Pastor Steve Merle, the founder of Victory Philippines, and his wife Deborah would meet with us regularly. And they would encourage us to spend time with the Lord every day. To read our Bible, to memorize scripture, to pray in the Spirit, and to preach the gospel of Christ everywhere we go. Now another part of uh, our discipleship was giving instructions from the scripture, from the Bible, on how we should treat one another like pray for one another, encourage one another, forgive one another, overlook offense, and many more, including avoid gossiping. One day, I was talking to Debra, and I began complaining about another student. I was telling her, I don't like so-and-so. I was talking to her one day, and she said this to me, I don't like that. And then I noticed Debra wasn't listening to me at all. She was looking around, and then she said, stop right there, and called someone. As I follow her direction, lo and behold, coming towards us was the person I was talking about, and she joined us. And then Deborah said, Judy, would you like to repeat to her what you've been saying a while ago? My jaw dropped, no words came out of my mouth, my mind went blank, and I don't know how I got out of that situation, whether I melted or fainted. But one thing I know, a quarrel, a possible quarrel was stopped right there. Without gossip, a quarrel dies down. Now you might say, how was it a gossip? You weren't repeating someone else's story. That was your own story. Well, it was a gossip because I was telling my story to someone who was not involved in the situation. You see, the Bible gives us clear instruction on how to handle conflict or offenses or sin. In Matthew 18, verse 15, the Lord Jesus Christ himself said, If your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault just between the two of you. In some translation, it says, in private, alone. So the first step in handling offense or misunderstanding is to go to the person who offended you in private and in private does not include going to your best friend going to a victory group or even going online in facebook posting all your complaints for everybody to read go to your brother show him his fault in private just between the two of you alone anything beyond that is gossip you know why we should not gossip? I'll give you two reasons. Number one, a gossip, the words of a gossip will poison our hearts. Proverbs 26.22 says, 
The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down a man's inmost parts. You know, when we're gossiping, those words don't just float in the air. They enter our ears, they invade our minds, our thoughts, and they settle in our hearts. Haven't you noticed that when you're gossiping about someone, your perception of that person changes. You cannot anymore look at that person impartially. And in most cases, the fight between the two of them becomes your fight too. Now you're offended by someone who hasn't done anything to you. The words of a gossip will poison our hearts. And what does the Bible says about our hearts? Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Second reason why we should not gossip. We have an enemy, and it's not one another. Our enemy is the devil whose main job description, according to John 10.10, 10, is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He is a murderer from the very beginning. And when he whispers his words in our ears, they don't contain even an ounce of truth. When the devil lies, he speaks his native language. John 8 says, he is a liar. And Revelation 12.10 says, He is the accuser of the brethren, who accuses them day and night before God. You see, the devil does not take a vacation, not even a short break. He is seriously focused in doing his job of destroying us. And so when we get involved in gossiping, against each other we are doing the devil a favor of doing his job of destroying us and so instead of biting each other first thessalonians 5 11 says we are to encourage one another we are to build each other up that's what god wants his people to do you know, we've been reading in Proverbs about wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And they give us a clear picture of God Himself. God is wisdom. He is the embodiment of all wisdom and understanding. From His mouth comes knowledge and understanding. And so when He gives His commands, when He gives His instruction, they are reflection of God Himself, of His holiness, righteousness, mercy, justice, His grace, His everlasting love, His power, and His authority. And what does Proverbs say about that? that we should hold on, lay hold of God's Word, pay attention, listen closely, keep His commands. For they are given to us to prosper us and not to harm us. To guard and protect us, saving us from the way of the evil one. God's command, commands, guides us into the path of righteousness which leads to abundant life. You know when I think about that, my heart is filled with thankfulness and with assurance. And I hope that your hearts are filled with those two. That the God we trust, the God we serve, the God we follow, loves us and deeply cares for us. Let me leave you with these words. As God's people, let us use our words to encourage, to strengthen, and to build one another and those around us so that we become God's voice of hope in this dying world. Let us pray. 
Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are wisdom. And we can trust you, God. We can trust you. That the, that the commands, the instructions given to us are to prosper us and not to harm us. To guide us into life abundant. Lord, help your people. Help us to make strong resolve not to gossip. Instead, use our words to encourage, to strengthen, and to build one another up and those around us. Lord, help your people. Help us to live lives that are pleasing to you. This we ask in your name. Amen. Let's continue to worship God and sing this song. declare that you are good you are holy and only you deserve all praise and honor amen if you need more prayers or you want to know how to start a relationship with god please let us know check our website at victory.org.ph before we go let me declare a blessing over us the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. Have a blessed day, everyone.